Hello, Graystale athletes and everybody else. Greetings from our closed gym in um, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Um, as I announced in a previous video, we were closed the other day by state order. Uh, a lot of you um, here in Michigan, across the country, all over the world are in a similar circumstance. Um, I have clients both here at the gym and uh, online clients um, who have well-equipped home gyms and um, that's great for you. You will uh, continue to use your barbells and uh, train accordingly. Uh, those of you who are my in-person clients and training here at Graysteel and have your home gyms, uh, I will be sending you programming um, and uh, that will be at a little bit of an offset. Um, a lot of you are over 60 and I don't want you uh, pushing limit weights without me there to coach you. Uh, online clients, you'll continue to use your home gyms as already prescribed. Um, but those of you who do not have access to a home gym, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to provide you just one sort of home program that you can do with minimal equipment so that um, you can maintain uh, your fitness and strength and mobility um, as much as possible, even without access uh, to barbells, racks, and plates, and so forth. Um, this is not the workout. There's a ton of these kinds of workouts out there. Uh, I just watched Alan Thrall had a couple of great videos on this today that are probably a little bit more suited to those of you who are younger and um, stronger, but some of you uh, may find that useful. Uh, all kinds of people have these um, uh, various at-home workouts that you can do with limited equipment. So this is just one uh, possibility. This program uh, that I'm going to give you today is geared specifically towards my masters, um, people who work out here at Graysteel. I know their capacities. I know what kinds of things that they can do. This program will, will challenge you uh, if you're one of my athletes here at Graysteel, um, but in a different way than the usual barbell training will do. And, um, and it should be safe uh, and uh, doable for you. Uh, with a minimum of space and a minimum of facilities and equipment. So with that all in mind, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the short-term goal of the individual workout uh, is to do this entire workout in this document, and I'll tell you how to get your hands on this document uh, at the end of the video, uh, in a single session. Uh, depending on your fitness, this may not be possible at first. You may not be able to do the entire workout in 60, 70 minutes. Uh, the overall goals of the program um, are to minimize the loss of strength and muscle, uh, to improve muscular endurance, preserve your range of motion and balance, uh, and to reinforce the habit of training. Uh, and also, I think, to basically help you dissipate some of the angst uh, that we're all embedded in right now, give you something to do, uh, get a little bit of dopamine going. Um, feel like you're fit and alive and doing something that is productive and useful and maintaining your readiness and knowing that you'll be as fit as you can be when it is time to come back to Grace Steel. Um, and so I think that there is uh, a spiritual and emotional and psychological benefit to doing this program as well. So some general notes on uh, this program, uh, especially if you are one of my athletes, one of my online or in-person athletes. Number one, I want you to log these workouts just as you would do a workout in the gym. Um, there are parameters for progression here. We'll uh, mention them in the video and uh, we'll also have them in this document. This is training, not exercise. It's not as much training for strength as what you usually do here, uh, but it is training nevertheless. Number two, rest intervals will be short. Um, loads will be light, necessarily, because you don't have access to barbells. And the emphasis, given the limitations, is on maintaining movement patterns and muscular endurance. Three, ensure that your loading implements are safe. So this program will rely on loading implements that you should have around the house. Hopefully a lot of you, even though you don't have barbell equipment, will have like dumbbells in your attic or in your basement or something like that, kettlebells, something like that. If you do not have dumbbells, try to acquire a few pair um, you know, like from Amazon or something like that. Otherwise, you can use cans, handheld tools, buckets, bags, etc. One thing that you might consider doing is one thing that you might consider doing is uh, taking a bottle 
can, something like that, something that you can close off and fill it with sand or shot or some other material that will allow you to give yourself a, a little bit of resistance. We'll demonstrate a little bit uh, of this as well. But the most important thing is to make sure that your implement is safe. Don't have something that's too big or ungainly or slippery that's going to fall out of your hand uh, in the middle of a rep. Make sure that it's safe. It's better that it be safe than anything else. Any other attribute it has, including its weight, is secondary to safety. Be safe with this stuff. Cans, kettlebells, dumbbells, whatever. Four, I want you to perform the workout in the order given, both in this video and in the document, once you get your hands on it. Five, if you do not believe you can perform the entire workout, ask yourself if you're just being, uh, you know. If the answer is no, uh, prioritize the movements indicated with an asterisk here in the document and in the video or start by removing one work set. You must perform exercises from each category. So what you're gonna see here is that there are three major categories, squat, upper body, and deadlift category. Uh, no matter what, log your work and pay attention to your progression parameters. You must progress either with sets and reps or with loading, but there must be some sort of progression. As you log these workouts, because remember, you're training, not exercising, you should see some sort of progression. Increased number of reps, uh, increased amount of weight, increased number of sets, and so on. You must be able to see and document some form of progress as you do this temporary program. Six, feel free to post on the Patrons of Graysteel page if you're a patron of Graysteel. If you are one of my online clients, you are now automatically a member of Patrons of Graysteel. All you have to do is go to the link that I'll be sending you by email and request permission and you will be approved as a patron of Graysteel. If you are one of my in-person clients, you are also automatically um, a member of the POG. All you have to do is go to the Facebook page and request permission and you'll be admitted. A lot of you have done that already. And once you're there, you can commiserate with the rest of us. We're giving each other a lot of cheer, a lot of encouragement uh, during these difficult times. And you can post videos of how you're doing this program and how you're progressing. And um, we'll all encourage you. And uh, we may learn something from you as well. This program is not written in stone, and it is quite likely to morph over the coming couple of two or three, four weeks or so. Um, so we can't guarantee to critique all those videos on Patrons of Grace, although we'll probably get to a lot of them. But you'll be giving yourself a degree of accountability there and inspiring your fellow athletes to follow your example. Seven. Uh, again, this workout may be amended as we gain more experience with it. If you're doing well with it and you see these amendments come down the pike, you can just stick with it um, or adopt them as you see fit. Either way, again, you must focus on progression uh, in weight or more probably in reps and sets. And number eight, don't hesitate to contact us with questions. If you're not in the POG, um, uh, you can ask questions in the doobly-doo. Uh, if, you, if you're if you seeing this on Instagram, you can ask me questions on Instagram. If you're a member of POG, um, ask questions uh, in the POG. If you're not a member of POG and you're not one of my clients, it's very simple. Just go to patreon.com slash gracedeal and become a patron. Uh, if you pledge as little as a dollar a month to the support of the Gracedeal channel, you will be authorized to join our community of POGs. So consider it. Okay, um, so uh, with that, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so we're going to begin with our squat workout, and our squat workout is going to begin with air squats. Almost all of you have done these before. We're using it basically as a sort of a warm-up. You can do what other sort of general warm-up you want to get your body temperature up and start to get limber. But we're going to start with one set of 10 air squats. You're just going to do just general air squats. You're going to focus on all those same things that we always focus on, trying to keep your chest up, knees out, butt back, feet flat on the floor, hip drive, keeping the weight over the middle of your foot, right? Just sort of getting yourself warmed up. It can be a little bit harder, as you all know, to maintain good form in the squat when there's not actually a weight on your back, but you're going to do your best. 
You can see here I might be opening up my hips a little bit early on some of these reps, um, but I forgive myself. Um, try and use your hip drive out of the hole. Focus on the breathing the way you always do it, right? Just like you would be warming up for, you know, barbell squats. So, single set of 10. We're not going to worry about progression parameters on these. We're using these more as a sort of a warm-up. Then we're going to go to what I call load and explode squats. Those of you who work out with me, you know what's going on here. We're going to go focus on slow down and fast up. We're going to do these at body weight, and our progression factor is going to be the time that we spend in the eccentric phase. So you're going to count your way down, like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and your progression is going to be how much time you spend in that downward or eccentric phase, right? So go from two Mississippi to three Mississippi, and three Mississippi to four Mississippi, and all the way on up to five or six or seven or eight Mississippi, from workout to workout, you're gonna increase the amount of time that you spend at the eccentric phase. You're gonna try and slow it down. These should burn a little bit. But the bottom line is, is once you do get to the bottom, you're gonna focus on that explosive movement out of the hole. You're gonna come up as fast as you can. Okay, so two sets of five there. Then we're moving on to pause squats, right? And here, again, we're going to focus on a count, except this is not going to be the count on the way down. This is the amount of time that you spend at the bottom. And we're not going to count Mississippis. We're going to count cues. So you all have things that you need to work on with the squat, and you're going to count cues at the bottom. So you're going to think maybe a count of three cues. Knees out, chest up, butt back, and up, right? Go down to the bottom. You think knees out, chest up, butt back, and drive. Right? And that's your count. And then as you want to progress, you can add the number of cue counts that you do at the bottom. Knees out, feet flat, chest up, uh, and up. Right? You're going to go from three cues to four cues. Don't know if that was four cues, but whatever. Right? You're going to add more and more cues at the bottom. And these are going to be based on the things that you know you need to work on uh, on your squat. Paw squats are great for improving the bottom position of the squat, and the bottom position is everything. So that's what you're going to work on here. We're going to finish our squat workout with goblet squats, three sets of five, using a dumbbell, kettlebell, can, or other safely held implement. Your progression is going to be in weights, reps, and sets. You're going to log all of these, and you're going to make, you're going to make progression first in weight if you can, then in reps, and then in sets holding a safely held weight in front of the chest here in the position shown, and doing as close to a low bar back squat, you know, with your hips back as possible, although this will encourage a sort of a front squat kind of a movement. We're not going to worry about that, right? You're just going to do your three sets of five. You'll notice that I'm wearing street shoes here. That's fine. You'll also notice that my knees are wrapped, and that's because I have creaky old knees. This video is in no men way meant to suggest that you need to wrap your knees for this workout. Do it if you have to. Don't do it if you don't. Now we're going to move to the upper body workout with dumbbell presses. We're going to do three sets of five using dumbbells, kettlebells, cans, or some other safely held weight, progressing in weight, reps, and sets. And again, detailed progression parameters will be found in the document on our blog. Now for these and the other upper body movements, I want you to not use alternate arms. I want you to emulate the barbell movement uh, as much as possible. So you're going to do both arms simultaneously and you're going to focus on all the same things that we do with the press. Getting that weight over the shoulder joint at the top, keeping the gut and knees tight, keeping the feet flat on the floor, and of course a hard healthy shrug at the top to really bring those traps into the movement pattern. Right. So all the things that you normally focus on when you do the press, you're going to focus on with these dumbbell presses. Right? You're going to increase the number of reps and sets or the weight that you hold in your hands as long as you can hold it safely. Now we're going to move to curls, three sets of eight, using dumbbells, kettlebells, cans, or some other safely held implement. Our progression, again, is going to be in weight, reps, and sets. Once again, we're going to try and emulate the barbell movement as much as possible here. Right? So using both hands, not doing alternates. If you want to add a set of alternates, because for some reason it makes you happy to do that, you go ahead and do that. But I want you to do uh, uh, your prescribed uh, three sets of eight like this. 
You can progress to three sets of 10 or three sets of 12 if the weight that you have available to you is not challenging, right? Just make sure that you log your progression. You're going to focus on keeping the gut tight, the knees tight. You're going to focus on proper breathing, elbows up at the bottom. Another way you can progress is by increasing the time that you spend in the eccentric phase of the exercise. So on the way down, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, but always make sure that you explode them up. We're going to progress to floor flies now, three sets of eight using dumbbells, kettlebells, cans, or some other safely held weight, increasing uh, our progression with weight, reps, and sets. Do these if you can do them. Don't do them if they're uncomfortable, if there's some sort of limitation that prevents you from doing them. All right? You're going to lay flat on your back, thinking about your upper back hard in the floor, and keeping those elbows straight and bringing those weights together um, just like you would uh, a narrow grip bench press, right? So the weight should be in a line with your shoulder joints at the top. They're not going to be over your face. They're not going to be over your belly, right? They're going to be right over the collarbones, right over the shoulder blades at the top of the movement. And this is going to help you hang on to your upper body strength and some of your bench pressing strength, right? Once again, you're going to be able to progress if you want to from three sets of eight to three sets of 10 or three sets of 12, right? or increase the weight if you're able to find an implement that you can hold safely. Next, we're going to go to push-ups, and you'll notice that this is a required movement pattern. I want you to do your best with these. You're going to do three sets of AMRAP, that is as many weight reps as possible, at body weight, of course, increasing reps and sets. You can also increase the eccentric component if you want to use that as a progression parameter. Lowering your body so that the chest touches or almost touches the floor, I like a slow down, fast up tempo, emphasizing an explosive concentric phase and a, like a long, slow eccentric phase, so you should feel the burn. Do these on your toes if you can, but if you have to, go down on your knees and make progress doing push-ups on your knees. That's totally valid if you can't do one on your toes. And keep doing these until you can do some reps or some sets uh, on your toes. That can be a major landmark progression parameter for you. Okay, push-ups, essential. This will help you hang on to your bench press and pressing strength. We don't have video of it, but I wanted to uh, tell you that um, if you are a master who can actually do chins, full chins and pull-ups and you have uh, access to a facility that will allow you to do that, then please do. Go ahead and do your chin-up and pull-up workout. Um, you're going to increase your reps, sets, and total reps. It's great exercise if you're doing them. A lot of our masters, a great deal, people over 60, over 70, over 90, uh, are not able to do these. But if you are, Godspeed. Please go ahead and, you know, chin-ups and pull-ups, they go away quick. So if you're able to do them while you're on lockdown, please do. We're going to finish our workout with a deadlift variant. We're going to use kettlebell RDLs, kettlebell Romanian deadlifts, three sets of 10, so a significant amount of volume, using a dumbbell, kettlebell, can, or other safely held weight. Something that you'll be able to raise and lower vertically is not going to bump into your, your crotch or your knees or your legs or your belly or whatever, right? Everybody has to do these. Everybody should be able to do these. Progression, you're going to increase weight reps and sets. You can also, again, increase the amount of time that you spend in the eccentric phase of the movement. And the eccentric phase of the movement is what it's all about here. Standard deadlift starts on the floor. These start in the standing position. It starts in the standing position. With you standing up straight, take a big breath. You're going to lower the weight slowly until it comes to almost the bottom of the deadlift position, almost touching the floor. And then there's going to be a stretch reflex, and you're going to stand up. All right? So here you are starting at the top, slowly lowering. Right? Now, unlike that rep, which was just for demonstration, what you want to do is you want to feel that stretch reflex at the bottom and bring it up quick. I like a slow down, fast up tempo for these as well. I don't usually do these, so this is something I'm not particularly well practiced at. So those of you who are RDL purists, you know, relax, right? So be a good exercise for you. You can use a kettlebell with it, or you can use a dumbbell, anything that'll allow you to get down to that bottom position and won't get in your way. A little stretch reflex off the bottom, stand it up, right? Slow down, fast up. Will this maintain your top deadlift strength? Absolutely. 
not, but it will uh, help you keep the movement pattern. You'll be able to focus on your breathing and setting your back. And if you're getting your hamstrings nice and sore with these, it will help you hang on to some of that muscle mass uh, so that when you come back to the platform, um, you'll be a little bit better off and able to start your deadlift program um, from less of a deficit. So there you go, Romanian deadlifts with kettlebells, dumbbells, paint can, a, you know, a bag filled with heavy stuff, whatever you need to do uh, in order to get the movement pattern done. A few words about conditioning. The foregoing workout will help you maintain your conditioning if you keep the rest interval short and uh, get it all done in an hour or so. Should actually be able to do it in a little bit less than an hour. But if you have access to these facilities, you can add rowing, calisthenics, swimming, um, as your experience and resources uh, allow. And you should absolutely be taking a walk every day. Log your distance, log your time, increase your distance, decrease your time, maintain your conditioning and fitness, get your fresh air, get the sunshine. That's all going to be really good for you. The written program is available on our blog at the website, www.graysteel.org. So go get it. Stay strong. Stay healthy. Thanks for watching.